Hi everyone, Katya here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're diving into Korean literature as I share my top picks across genres and the books I'm looking forward to reading this year. Hopefully this will help you decide which Korean novels you want to read, whether that's something I've highly recommended in this video or one of the ones that I'm saying is on my radar and piques my interest. So let's start with Hwang Sok Yong. Oh, actually, no, I've put this into different um, themes. So I just have to remember the themes. The first one is a journey through different periods. And I think that Hwang Sok Yong is a good author for this. Uh, we'll start off with At Dusk, a book, a fictional novel of his that provides a gentle introduction to these historical themes, modern history of uh, Korea. It's a reflective journey around Park Min-woo, a successful architect in Seoul, and masterfully intertwined personal introspection, a corruption scandal, and an unexpected message from a former love, prompting a re-evaluation of min -woo's memories of this time and the decisions he made, and shining a light on the societal changes in Korea. This novel skillfully balances personal stories with national history, highlighting the costs of progress. The pace is mostly slow, but it's wonderfully compelling for anyone interested in modern history, um, especially South Korea's, and particularly the rapid growth that it experienced in the 80s and the conditions of the early 2000s that led to the term Hal Joseon. Yeah. Then we go on to a book um, that I want to read of his, the Guest, a deep dive into the divided Korea through Roy Yusop's eyes. A Christian minister, now living in America, returns to his home village 40 years later. Since Sok Yong is known for his emotionally rich narratives, I suspect that this book is going to be one that's going to make me cry very much like another novel of his that made me cry, Princess Bari, but we won't go into that one for this video. Familial Connections is next. So Familial Connections, <laughs> can I even say it? Familial Connections and Coming of Age through Kyung Sok Shin. It's great for character development. So The Girl Who Wrote Loneliness by Kyung Sok Shin, I think offers a poignant coming of age story set against Korea's 1970s and 80s industrial landscape. This book is effortlessly informative and it showcases rapid economic growth that took place at the time, political instability, the bravery of everyday civilians and students and emerging trade unions standing up for their rights, but also very much focuses on family because it looks at the main character and how she reflects on the sacrifices that her parents made and also uh, the different experiences that um, her brothers had. So looks at the gender differentiation of the experience of what it's like to have gone through that time period as a woman compared to a man. Our book of Kyung Suk Shin's that didn't quite work for me is recent translation. I went to see my father, which has been on a lot of booktube videos. And I just want to say it echoes themes of family connection and regret from Shin's previous novels, so I felt it was too repetitive for me, and it also had a much slower pace. So if that's one that you've seen cropping up everywhere, I don't think it's a very, um, it's not the best portrayal of her work is what I want to say. It's not entirely new. And if you like uh, Hwang Sok Yong's um, writing, then uh, perhaps I offer you a different entry point into Kyung Sok Shin's writing in terms of I'll be right there, which is got that sort of modern history element even more than any of her other books. And it looks at the political revolution of the 1980s through the eyes of um, eight years later students at the time who protested and their tragic personal history. Um, so that's one main character and three college um, friends of hers. Next we look at gender discrimination through Cho Nam Ju and Kim Ji-young, born 1982, which a lot of people will know. This stands out for its potent narrative on gender inequality. Its minimalist prose powerfully conveys Ji-young's life as a microcosm of global societal issues linked to gender discrimination and marking Cho Nam-ju as a writer of 
international significance. So this is pretty much a book that I don't even need to mention. Um, I will say that her book Saha was really disjointed in comparison um, and lacked immersive quality uh, in Kim Jong Ji Yong. Um, I would caution against simply buying it if you've read her first book and then you go, oh, wow, she's written something else. Uh, rather, just try it from the library first. It's set in a housing complex in the shadows of a prosperous town. And the story portrays a disenfranchised residence of Saha estates, these individuals lacking valuable skills and assets, endure harsh labour and live in deplorable conditions. The narrative showcases the grim realities of societal neglect, but I found the world building so disjointed that I struggled to immerse myself in the narrative and I pretty much gave up uh, less than the halfway mark. While I might revisit it in the future, it's nowhere near as good as Kim ji Young. Still, I remain hopeful for another book of hers that came out late last year. It is called Miss Kim Knows and Other Stories. So I am anticipating that this one's going to be as good as the first, hopefully. It tells the story of eight Korean women ranging in age from 10 to 80. Each story is meant to encapsulate a facet of contemporary career, reflecting challenges and injustices that women face throughout their lives. So I am excited for that one. Then we go on to cozy literature. And that is like an oxymoron, pretty much, for past Korean literature that's been translated to English because we have had so many really, really deep and triggering um, Korean literature books so far. Uh, this one being cozy was such a wonderful change of pace. It is welcome to the Hyun Nam Dong bookshop which I think a lot of you will have already seen my dedicated single book review because it's like yay there's a really cozy Korean literature book that makes such a change. Um, we've got our main protagonist in the is someone who has hit a wall in life, her high-flying career, demanding marriage, all of them, all of that stuff, all the elements leave her really drained and she craves change and she takes these bold steps, quits her job, leaves her husband, opens the Hunam Dong bookshop in a tranquil district of Seoul. And I was surprised to find uh, that there is another book that's been described as cozy from um, Korean translated fiction. It is recently published Dalagut, a uh, dream department store. In a mysterious town that lies hidden in our collective subconscious, there's a quaint little store where all kinds of dreams are being sold. They and night visitors, both human and animal from all over the world, shuffle in sleepily in their pajamas. I don't know why um, pets would be walking in in their pajamas, but anyway, lining up to purchase their latest adventure. The story revolves around Penny, a new employee, uh, Dalagut, the store's eccentric owner, Mrs. Weather, Penny's confidant, Vigo Myers, a mysterious department employee, and an array of unique clientele. Uh, the plot thickens when a valuable dream payment is stalled, leading Penny on an adventurous quest through this whimsical world. Talking about dreams, we might as well go into the surreal, surreal, surreal world of Bora Chung. So sur surreal, why can't I say it? Surreal short stories by Bora Chung. Um, starting with Cursed Bunny, uh, intriguing blend of horror, sci-fi and the supernatural collection of 10 unique stories encouraging readers to ponder issues like capitalism, um, societal norms and yeah, it, just some some that just read as absurd narratives if you don't want to dive in too deep, but it's so wonderfully compelling. And it's inspired me to pick up her upcoming collection, Your Utopia, which is out in the US on the 30th of January and early February in the UK, exploring dystopian themes and human nature. Then we move on to less surreal short stories by Choi Yoon Young and the Penguin Book of Korean Short Stories. Choi's Shook a Smile is a collection of seven slice-of-life stories, each delving into complex themes like mental health, politics, and trauma. The stories are rich, emotional, and deeply resonant, offering um, such human connection through the use of letters and diaries that deepen the characters' emotions and our link to them as readers. I don't think there's another book out in English from the author, but this collection inspired me to pick uh, the Penguin Book of Korean Short Stories to add to my wish list. 
um, which is said to be an eclectic combination of um, essential introduction, whimsical stories uh, from Korean literature, well-known ones that cover 20th century writing, Japanese occupation, and the devastating war between North and South Korea, as well as the rapid urbanization that has happened since the 80s. So I'm looking forward to that. It sounds like a vibrant mix. Then we go on to gay and lesbian lives in Korea. And the one that I recommend is a, a, oh, concerning, oh my goodness, concerning my daughter by Kim Hyejin. A slice of life novel with very flawed realistic characters, not always likable, but really easy to imagine as a reader. Hugely realistic storyline. It tells the story of an aging mother and her daughter, uh, Green, who returns home with her girlfriend, Lane. The mother struggles to accept her daughter's choices in life, reflecting a broader generational conflict. The story addresses generational conflict, LGBTQ uh, rights, and aging with authenticity. Um, it has that slice of life, sort of like laid back feel, reflective feel, but it is so compelling. So I'm eager to read her next novel, Council Culture, out in April, which follows a therapist whose entire life unravels a broken marriage, lost job, vilified in the media after a scripted comment in an interview. But that is not LGBTQ. So I looked up what I want to read next for that theme. And we have got Love in the Big City. It is said to be an energetic novel capturing the essence of urban soul life through the life of young a Korean student navigating the complexities of relationships, family and self-discovery alongside his best friend, experiencing the vibrant nightlife of Seoul and confronting their anxieties about love and life. Then we have the theme of assassins and The Old Woman with the Knife by Gu byung Mong. Uh, this novel introduces us to Horn Klo, a 65, yes, 65-year-old female contract killer contemplating retirement during a job for her disease control company. She makes an uncharacteristic mistake, and that brings her past into sharp focus for her, making her think about various choices she's made and battling against sabotage from a younger rival while having these unexpected thoughts and new personal desires coming to the forefront in her life. I thought it was really a good mix of thrilling and reflective. If you have watched Kill Box soon, then you'll find similar themes in this book, although Hornclaw is more seasoned as a character. And while I haven't come across any other English translations of the author's works, I did find another author's uh, book that deals with assassins, and that is The Plotters by An Soo Kim, said to be a gripping tale of Ri Seng, um, raised to be a hitman in Seoul's criminal underworld. After showing mercy to a target, he finds himself under scrutiny, embroiled in a dangerous game of survival. Thrillers, Lemon by Kwon Yi Son. I reviewed this probably two years ago uh, when it was just newly out and thought it was wonderfully understated but impactful, set against the backdrop of an infamous high school beauty murder that takes place in 2002. Lemon uh, tells the story um, of the lingering effects of this unsolved crime on the victim's sister, Da On, and others connected to the case. The novel is far more than a murder mystery. It's an exploration of privilege, jealousy, and trauma. It's easy to really misjudge Lemon, because I think it's underrated. Um, if people expect a conventional murder mystery, they're, they're going to be disappointed in it. But if they're looking for something that has a nuanced look at the relationships and lives entangled with the victim, showcasing different perspectives with a poetic touch, lots of reflection, and some recurring motifs like the color yellow adding layers to the story, then yeah, this is the one for you. It mingles social commentary with intimate narratives. And I haven't found any other books translated into English by the author. So instead, the book that this has inspired me to go on to explore is The Good Son, a gripping psychological thriller about Eugen, a young man who wakes up covered in blood and finds the body of his mother downstairs. He decides to hide the evidence and pursue the killer himself. 
Then I've got a bonus for you. Winter in Sokcho by Alyssa Joao du Sapan. Not originally written in Korean, so therefore it's not in the main books. Um, written in the French, but set in South Korea. This novel offers a fresh perspective on identity through the eyes of a half-Korean, half-French woman. And the story really brings to life the unique atmosphere of Sokcho, a city near the North Korean border different from the usual settings that I've been reading about, which are mostly set in Seoul or unnamed rural areas. The narrative captures Sokcho's city, the stark winter beauty, and the port life and the fish and the food and everything comes to life. And especially, I love that complex um, deep dive into the main character's identity. And that's it. That's my roundup of top Korean novels and the books they've inspired me to read this year. Let me know your thoughts and recommendations in the comments. And thanks so much for joining me. Happy reading, everyone.